Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Morning, Pastor. Good morning, Deacon Ford. How you doing? I'm doing well. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you also. You're looking I mean, bright. I want to your wife, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking bright and fresh this morning. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You rested up from yesterday? I'm never, I'm never fully rested up, but I feel pretty good. I feel good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I didn't overeat yesterday. That was a good thing. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise good morning, Lord. Cruz family. And good happy morning, Mother's Day Bobby. to you, Marilyn. Good morning, Bobby. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. It's Tell Cheryl I say happy Mother's Day. I will. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, it's 1029. So we're gonna just get ready, get ready, get started. We got people on Facebook. We got people on Zoom. Amen. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Amen. amen. Good, 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 good. Amen. Good to be seen. Amen. 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 Okay. Hold on one second. I need to send a zoom out to somebody. While we while I'm getting this together, is there a testimony? Yes, I just thank God, you know, for everything as to what he has done. And I thank him for his keeping power on how he has kept us, this family. And so um, with all the things that's going on, the balance in, in this uh, city, I just thank God that he is a uh, uh, you know, keeping our family safe and my church family safe. Amen. I went to see my mom yesterday and she looks well and she's doing a whole lot better, you know, physically. So I just thank God on how he's keeping her. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. let us get started. Then me. let us open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, with, again with thanksgiving on our hearts and praises on our lips, Lord God. We come, Lord God, acknowledging, Lord God, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be, Lord God? Truly, Lord God, you have been on our side every day of our lives, Lord God. Even on this Mother's Day, Lord God, you have kept the mothers, Lord God. Kept them, Lord God, in the right mind, Lord God, even when they wanted to pull out their hair, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just being so good and kind to us, Lord God. Even during this pandemic, Lord God. Yes, we have lost people. Less people have gotten sick. But through it all, Lord God, you have still been good to us, Lord God. And we just want to give you some praise this morning, Lord God. We don't want the Lord God to focus on the bad, but we just focus on the good, Lord God. Yeah. You, Lord God, that you have never, ever left our side, Lord God. You've always been with us, Lord God. Down through the years, Lord God, you have showered us with blessings, Lord God, even when we was not so deserving of them, Lord God. And so we thank you, God. We praise your holy name, Lord God. And Lord God, as we get ready to start this worship service, Lord God, we want everyone to forget about themselves and concentrate on you, Lord God. Lord God, 
God, we just thank you, Lord God, that there is a word from you, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we can praise you and bless your name at all times, because indeed you are worthy to be praised, Lord God. And right now, Lord God, we just say, have your way, have your way, have your way, Lord God. Lord God, lift up somebody countenance today, Lord God. Stretch out in somebody today. Holy Spirit, just fall fresh on them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, let them feel your fire. Let them feel your joy. Let them feel your peace just one more day, Lord God. And we are going to say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, turn it over to Minister Marilyn Cruz to bring us a selection. Amen. Amen. I just want to take a moment to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Amen. That's on the line. Uh, I'll be singing Blessed Assurance. Amen. Because he has blessed us greatly. Amen. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen, amen. Truly, this is our story. This is our song. 
Yeah. Praising our Savior all the day long. No matter what's going on in our day, we can still bless the Lord at all times. Amen. We can still make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, my soul does rejoice. My soul calls out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. All I have to do, say, is just think about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. The dark clouds will dissipate. Amen, amen. All I have to do, Think about the goodness of the Lord, and I can feel the joy bells ringing. All I have to do is think about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I can just start praising the Lord all by myself. Amen. Amen. Because I know God has been good to me. I don't know what your testimony is. I don't, <coughs> I don't know what your story is. Amen. But my story is that my God has been good to me. My story is, amen, that I serve a mighty, mighty good God, amen, a mighty good God, amen, that woke me up this morning, started me on my way, amen, nobody, nobody but the Lord, amen, 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 amen. So I've already prayed, amen, and we're getting ready to get into this rich word, amen. And so my text this morning, it's coming from Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 20 through 24. And I'll be reading the New King James Version. I'll tell you the truth, saints. One time, you know, I said I wasn't even going to preach a Mother's Day message. Amen. Amen. People have, had, have heard enough Mother's Day message. Amen. To carry them on. Amen. But about Wednesday, God placed upon my heart to preach this message. Amen. 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 So in obedience to the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm going to preach a Mother's Day message. And it's coming from Matthew again chapter 20, verses 20 through 24, amen. And it reads in the New King James Version this way. It said, then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. She replied, in your kingdom, Please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Oh yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. And when the 10 heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. Saying someone wrote that Mother's Day, again, my, my, my title rather is a mother's request made out of love. A mother's request made out of love. Someone wrote that Mother's Day is traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers in appreciation for all that they have done for them. This is the day that some mothers are rewarded for washing sheets in the middle of the night driving kids to school when they miss the bus, sometimes intentionally, and, and doing all those football, basketball, softball, and soccer games in the rain. This is also the day that children young and old should honor the person that gave them life and for fathers to honor the person that made them a dad or a bonus dad. And I want to say that I heard from my son this morning. Amen. He gave me a shout out. I also heard from Oscar. He gave me a shout out this morning. And so many others, amen. They gave me a shout out on this Mother's Day. Oscar, I need to put this plug in for others. I was telling Oscar on yesterday, I was talking to a, a senior lady. She said she'd been married 45 years. And she said her husband always makes her breakfast in bed. Well, 
I didn't get breakfast in bed, but I sure got breakfast cooked for me by Oscar. Amen. So I just thank God for Oscar. Saints, mothers are special creations. Their love is unconditional. The patience unsurpassed. Their understanding remarkable. You see, mothers have x-ray eyes that can see through walls and doors where their children are playing or being especially quiet. And they are able to tell just what is going on on the other side of their room. Mothers have, although you can't see it, see it more than one set of hands. So they can multitask. They can do many things for the family all at one time. And mothers have big hearts that allow her to love her family no matter what. And then mothers have the energy of a nuclear reactor that appears to never get tired because she can work all day, fight traffic to get home. And when she gets home, she miraculously transforms into a cook, a teacher, a chauffeur, maid and wife. Then there are mothers who are doctors and nurses without ever going to medical school because mothers knows how to kiss the hurt away and nurse a weak man back to health, amen? And then mothers are ministers that keeps the family before the throne of God. And she constantly intercedes for wayward family members. Mothers know that a child's growth is not measured by height or years or grade. It's marked by the progression from mama to mommy and then to mom. And mothers have the ability to know that something is wrong with their child, even though they may be separated by thousands of miles or even by oceans, amen. She just has that sixth sense when something is going on with their child. Mothers are disciplinaries, miracle workers, psychologists, counselors, coaches, fan clubs, attentive audience, listening ears, and awesome supporters. And mothers are the architect of personalities, crafters of vocabularies, and developers of attitude. Amen. And then mothers are protectors in the middle of the storm. You see, when things go bad, even grown men or grown women can be comforted by a mother's embrace. Mothers are soft voices and saying, I love you, and yet a firm hand when needed that guides correctly. Mothers are a child's first impression of God's love. You see, mothers are all these things and so much, much, much more, amen. And as loving and caring as mothers are, I read that most mothers hate four-letter words. In a poll conducted by a market research company, it was discovered that the most uh, unpopular four-letter words amongst mothers are cook, wash, iron, and dust. Amen. And Oscar can testify to that. Amen. Amen. I don't like cooking. I don't like washing. I don't like ironing. And I don't like dusting. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I do. I get some amens on that. Amen. <laughs> because a mother is, uh, because a mother is what she is, and that is a mother, and the love she has is such a special kind of love. It will cause her to sacrifice of herself in order that her children will have what they need also so they can have sometime what they want, amen. She will request the best, request the best of her children regardless of what society may think of them. We have either seen it on TV or have experienced it personally when a child has committed a horrendous crime and the mother pleads with the judge and the jury to spare her child's life. She knows that he or she 
may have done wrong, but still that's her child. <clears throat> and that's a special kind of love. That's a mother's love. Only a mother can look beyond all the bad and wicked and still see that little child that she carried in her womb for nine months, but she carries in her heart forever. Amen. I know, saints, that there are some people who have liked to have been mothers, but have not been able to do so. I know that there might be some mothers who had to bury a child. I know that there are some people who have been estranged from their mothers for one reason or another. And I know that there are some mothers who are beating themselves up for the mistakes that they have made and raising their children and wish that they could have a do-over. And I know that there are some people who no longer have their mothers with them. But whatever the case, saints, be it known to you that God is a loving God and that he's a forgiving heaven for heavenly father. And like a loving mother, he is also the God of all comfort to give his grieving and hurting children peace that passes all understanding. Amen. And so for my Mother's Day sermon, I will be talking about a mother's prayer request that was made by a mother out of love for her two children. Again, Matthew 20, 20 through 24, talks about the mother and I'll just say, calls her by name, Miss Zebedee. And it also talks about her two sons, but it does not identify what the name of Miss Zebedee is, nor the names of the two sons. So in order to identify the mother and the son's name, you have to read Matthew and Mark. In Matthew 27, 55 and 56, it records these words during the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. It says, and many women who had come from Galilee with Jesus to care for him were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Amen. Again, it just says at the cross now, the, the mother of James and John, who was the mother of the sons of Zebedee. So that's Miss Zebedee's son. But again, it identifies right there the son's name, but all they call the mother right now is Mrs. Zebedee, amen. But in order to find a mother's name, we have to go to Mark 15, verses 40 and 41, which is a companion scripture to Matthew 27, 55 and 56 of the same event. And it reads... <coughs> It says some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph, and Salome. Ding, ding, ding. That's the mother of James and John, the Zebedee's boys. Then it goes on to say they had been followers of Jesus and could care for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women had come with him to Jerusalem were also with them. So again, the mother of James and John is, 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 is identified in Mark 15, verse 40. And her name is Salome, not just Miss Zebedee, not just the mother of James and John, amen, amen. And so in, 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 in Mark 3 and 17, the sons are also identified as James and John. But it goes on to say that Jesus nicknamed these two individuals as sons of th a thunder. Thunder is something that is not seen, but it's heard. There's nothing wrong with thunder, but it does get your attention. The thunder did, did and a mighty crack of thunder happens to wake you out of sleep. That thunder did something. It got your attention again. So based on that, I want to talk about the sons of thunder's mother, Salome, 
who got the attention of Jesus as well as the other 10 disciples. And it says that Salome came to Jesus with a question from her heart. She didn't ask anything for herself. That's just like a mother. She didn't ask for fortune and fame. She didn't ask that her name go down in history. However, she loved her son so much that she requested that they be given the position of authority and responsibility in the kingdom of heaven. Saints, that's love. A good mother will put her desires and her aspiration away so that her children will have everything that they need to succeed. A good mother will deny herself so that her children may have. Salome right. could have asked that she be remembered in his kingdom. She could have asked that she be given a special place, but out of a mother's love, it made her request something for her children and not for herself. The request that she made caused the apostles to become indignant, amen. They got angry because they felt that the request was unjust or unworthy. But what they failed to understand that this was a mother's making a request for her sons. The request was like thunder in the atmosphere of the apostles. It caught their attention and it stirred an emotion within them against her sons. Nevertheless, Salome was showing love for her, even though they were grown for his children, even though they was grown as well as apostles of Jesus. And although not much about Salome is written in the Bible, we can find three wonderful things in our text about her and the love that she had as a mother. First, we can find that Salome prayed that her sons might be a part of the kingdom of God. Now I imagine most mothers have the same desire for her children as Salome, Salome did. That is the desire for greatness for her children. And although the disciples became indignant at, they, at her request, amen. Look what Jesus didn't do and look what Jesus did do. You see, amen. Jesus, did not berate her for asking greatness for her children. He simply reminded her of the cost of being seated on his right and left side in heaven, as well as simply reminding her, I mean, uh, uh, telling her it was the father who determined who would be seated in those positions of honor. Understand, saints, that Salome asked Jesus for something he could not give her, but what was under his control and authority, he did grant it. He told her in verse 23 that her two sons could drink from his cup of, su a cup of su suffering, amen. So sometimes, saints, we go to Jesus, amen, and ask things, amen. And sometimes there are things that Jesus cannot do for us, but he will do something greater for us, amen. So sometimes we might not get what we ask, but we get more than what we wanted, amen. So I know that many mothers pray for their children like Salome. Sometimes they pray out of necessity. Sometimes they pray because motherhood is not easy and glamorous. Many nights, mothers all over the world have prayed for the Lord to keep and protect their children. And when we were not saved, they probably prayed, Jesus, save them before it's too late. Saints, just think about it for a minute. When you were, and myself included, were too stubborn and hard-headed and didn't want to listen and felt that we were grown and could handle life on our own, the only reason we were not killed and sleeping in our grave it's because our mothers were somewhere late in the midnight hour crying out our name to the Lord, saying, 
Lord, save my child. Lord, protect my child. Lord, guide my child. Lord, heal my child. Lord, bless my child. Lord, don't let any harm come to my child. And say, like Salome, some mothers are still praying that same prayer for their grown children. Amen. Amen. Again, being a mother, being a father, it's not a gravy job and we make mistakes. Amen. But Miss Zebedee gives us a valuable example for she acts earnestly for her sons to be part of God's kingdom. And we need that same concern for our children today. What good is it if our children are successful, amen, making money, driving the best of automobiles, living in the best neighborhoods, but they don't know God or they're still, or they're not, or they stop serving God like they used to. What does it matter if our children gain the whole world but lose their soul, amen? That's why as mothers, we constantly, we continually, we forever call on their name. We lift their name up in prayer. We bring our children to the altar, amen. We fall on our knees and, Lord, and say, Lord, help this my child, amen. So I hope that in the heart of every mother and even father listening this morning, that there is a burden for you to go to the throne of God and pray for your children, amen. Again, it does not matter how young they are. It does not matter how old they are. They still are in need of prayer, amen. Just think about yourself. You might be grown, amen, good and grown. Some of you might be seniors, amen. And you still, amen, ask God, amen, to help you, amen. We are God's children and we're still seeking God's help. And so we, even though our children might be good and grown out on their own, they still need us to pray and to cover them, amen, with the blood of Jesus, amen. And so in order to aid in their spiritual growth, parents must give their children roots that will anchor them for the years ahead. And these roots start when they are young. Sometimes I'll, I'll say even they, they can start while the child is still in the womb, amen. Giving our children roots, amen. Give them safety, amen. There's a story about the New Halem National Park Visitor Center. And they said there's a display of a certain pine tree. And next to that tree is a description of that tree. It says during the first five years of that tree's life, the tree grows one foot above ground. But during those same five years, it grows roots four feet down. You see, it grows deeper than, uh, uh, down than it does up, amen. Because roots will be able to hold that tree in place. Roots will be able to find deep water in dry times. Roots will keep a tree alive. So saints, I declare and I decree to you that childhood and the growing up years are tough and children can get blown off course easily. They are easily deceived and therefore need to be given roots. So parents, teach your children the truth. Teach them scripture. Teach them how to pray for themselves and teach them how to love the Lord with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Again, teaching does not end when your children are grown and on their own because spiritual seeds and nuggets can be sown at various times. Amen. You know, sometimes my son calls me up. He might not be expecting what I'm saying, but I'm planting, amen, spiritual nuggets, amen. So whether they want to hear it or not, amen, continue to plant spiritual nuggets, amen, 
into your children's lives. Amen. Amen. And not only your children, but all children. Amen. All children that they come across. Because some people, some of the children, amen, don't have anybody to tell them right from wrong. And God wants you to plant those spiritual nuggets in their lives. Amen. The second thing that we find in our scripture is that Salome prayed that her sons would be an integral part in the work of the kingdom. Again, she didn't just want to be, be in the kingdom, but she wanted them to be working in the kingdom, amen. So Salome, she understood there was more to Jesus' kingdom than just being a part of it. Therefore, she wanted her sons, James and John, to be actively involved in it. You see, churches are full of people comfortable and content just to feel a pure pew on Sunday morning. Even while we are virtually, amen, they are full of people, amen, who's content, amen, to dial in, to tune into Facebook, to tune into Zoom, to tune into YouTube, to tune in whatever, and to hear a word, amen. And after the word, they cut it off, amen, and never do anything else for the kingdom of God, amen, amen. So there are plenty of people that sit back and ride the coattails of those that are actively involved in the work of the ministry. And these people become nothing more than spiritual thieves receiving the blessings. They never get involved in doing any real work. But Salome, she set an example to her son by working and by ministering to the needs of Jesus. As I said earlier, she was there at the cross, amen. She was among the women, amen, that ministered to Jesus, amen. Note that Mrs. Zebedee or Salome, she had raised James and John to be the sons of thunder, but it's now it was time to let them go. It was time, amen. It was time, amen, that she clipped their rings, wings, amen. It was time, amen, that she, that she would cut the apron string, amen, to let them go. Saints, one of the hardest things I believe a mother must ever do is to let go of her children. But I realize that there are some mothers that are so desperate to get rid of their children that the moment they turn 18, I don't know why they think 18 is such a magic number, they push them out of the home feeling that their duty is done, amen. But as I said before, just because they reach 18, your duty as a mother never ends, amen. Not saying that you're going to be the all in their lives, amen, you know, up in their face when they got a wife and they got their own family, but your duty to your child is never done, amen. Never done, amen. Never, never done, amen. They can be 18, 28, amen. They can be 108, amen, amen. They still is your child. And guess what? They still need their mother for some time. And old, and old saying, uh, the old saying says this. It says, a wise mother holds her newborn close to her chest, but spend the rest of their life letting them go. Miss Zebedee knew what it meant to let go. What she did when asking Jesus for her boys to sit on either side of him was simply her willingness to let them go as they pursued ministry that they was the same, the same for. So when our children get married, amen, as a parent, we have to let them go, amen, to establish their own homes, amen, and not be so involved in their day-to-day -day life, amen, amen. Every stage of our children's life requires some form of releasing them to grow. The older your child gets, the more you have to trust and God care over them. This does not mean we stop praying or caring for them. It simply means we let God know that they belong to him because they was only given to us loans. I mean, they were not given to us forever. They was loaned to us. We are just stewards over our children's lives. Amen. They belong, ultimately belong 
to the Lord. Amen. 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 Again, we're releasing them. There's always a risk, thing. But again, we must release them in confidence, knowing that we did our best and prepared them for the world. And then we leave the rest up to God. Because we know that God is all powerful. We know that God is all merciful and kind. God can be with them when we can't be. God can do for them what we can't do. Even as mothers, I gave you a whole list of things that mothers are. But yet, we can't do all the things that God can do for them. Amen. The last thing that we find in our text is that Salome had great expectations for her boys. She didn't just pray that her children would be doorkeepers. She wanted them on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus. These places represent authority, power, responsibility. And that's what Salome wants for her children. Thank God for the boldness of a Salome. She wasn't selling for mediocre of her children. Some might very well criticize her for, her for being so bold to ask such a question of favoritism. However, she loved Jesus and she knew that Jesus loved her and she was being an example to her son. She stayed devoted and clearly was not one to sit around doing nothing or keep being busy with the wrong things. At a time when others might have been running scared and in fear of their lives, she continued steadfastness along with a few other women, amen, to finish what needed to be done, even though Jesus was dying on the cross. As mentioned earlier, she was one of the women who was present when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, amen. Some of, some of his other followers had scattered, amen. They went their way, amen. But this woman and some other women, they stayed with Jesus even until the bitter end, amen. Thank God, amen, for Salome and thank God for all such mothers who push their children to do the best they can. Not saying that everybody can be president, not everybody can be an A student, not everybody can be this or that, but they still push their children to do the best that they can. Some mothers know that their children is not a B student, that they're A students. Some mothers know that their children are not a not an A student, but a B student, amen. But yet the mother knows her child, amen, amen. And she pushes that child, amen, to do what they are capable of doing, even when they don't believe in themselves, amen, amen, amen. So saying it's time for us to strive for excellency, amen, in positions we are called to, to reach for the very best there is, amen. The Lord has called, yes, yeah, some of us to be doorkeepers, some of us to be greeters, some of us to be a member of hospitality, some of us to be missionaries, some of us to be dancers or musicians, some to be deacons, some to be trustees, some to be preachers. Whatever the calling is on your life, do it to the best of your ability and do it unto the Lord, amen, even during this pandemic, amen. Don't leave everything up to the pastor. No, 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 because the work of the ministry still must go on, amen, during this pandemic, amen. There are, there are still souls to be saved. Yes, visitation may not be possible, but you can still call, you can still text, you can still Facebook message, you can even send calls, amen, to send someone a word of encouragement. You know, I was talking to someone on the phone on yesterday, and she said that she never hears, amen, anything from her church, amen. Nobody ever calls her. Nobody ever sends her a call. Nobody ever checks up on her, amen. That's a sad state of affairs, amen. I try to reach out, amen, to people, amen. I send texts, amen. And even though I don't hear from, a, from everybody, amen, it does not stop me from doing what God has called me to do. Some people say, well, they ain't called me. I ain't calling you, them, amen. They ain't text me. I'm not texting them, amen. Even if nobody call you, even nobody text you, amen, you can still do ministry by doing the things that you want somebody to do unto you, amen. Amen, amen. So again, during this pandemic, amen, don't stop doing ministry. Some people say, well, I'm still sending my money in, amen. Well, 
Sometimes you need to do more than just send your money in. Amen. Amen. There is work. Be like Salome. Amen. Push. Amen. And do something great for the kingdom of God. Amen. Encourage your children. Encourage your fellow members. Encourage your friends. Encourage others. Amen. To reach out to people. Amen. Reach one, teach one. Amen. If one person, amen, took on that ministry, think about how we would, I don't think we would have as many people feeling depressed and stressed out. Amen. A lot of times people are feeling distressed and depressed, not just because they can't see people, but mainly because they can't hear from anybody. They feel that nobody cares for them. There are many people in nursing homes. Children never check on them. There are many people in the hospital. People never check on them. Amen. Yes, you might not convince it. Amen. But what about calling? What about texting? Amen. What about sending them a card saying, I'm thinking about you today. God had you on my heart. Amen. Sometimes when I get a car, I'm not as much concerned about what's in the car as a poor, my mind. I'm, I get happy just by getting the car. Amen. I get happy by just getting the text. Sometimes I might not read the text by the way, but I'm just so happy that somebody text me. Amen. Had me on their mind. Pray for me. Amen. Text me. Amen. Checked on me. Amen. And, 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 Everybody has that need, amen, amen, to feel love and not forgotten and not invisible, amen. That is ministry, amen. That is striving for greatness, even during this pandemic. Saints, I conclude like I opening, oh, like I open, saying, today is special because we recognize that a mother's love is probably the close example we have to God's love. Are you showing God's love as a mother? Are you showing God's love as, 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 as just an individual? Amen. Are you showing the love of God? Amen. Amen. It's a mother's love goes through the valley of the shadow of death to bring life into being. It's a love that sacrificed over and over again. A love that even lay down its life for offspring. Mothers are people that matters. Mother matters because of the impact they have on our lives. And the real reason that matter, that mothers matters is because they love, amen. And I recognize today, and I think each woman, each mother, each grandmother, each godmother, each mother-in-law, each mother-in-law, each stepmother, each bonus mother, amen. Your hands, your heart, your love for God has helped nurture some child to be the person they are today. Again, it might not be your child, amen. It could be somebody else's child that you have helped nurture, amen, to be the person that they are today. There are some teachers, amen, amen, that children still remember what they did for them, that they saw the best in them when other people said that they would never fail, that they needed special education. But that mother, fought for that child, and that child has graduated, that child has gone on to greatness. Don't let somebody dictate to you what your child can be, amen. You be the mother, you be the parent, amen. Push your child, amen. Excel, make them excel, amen, to greatness, amen. When somebody wipe them out, wipe them off, amen, you keep them on the slate, keep them on the altar, amen. Keep praying for them, amen. Thank you today for your lives and your sacrifice, mothers. Again, we know something, sometimes we forget about the mom's ministry. That is one of the toughest assignments God ever gave somebody. Mothers have to be as insightful and as, as a psychologist, tough as a Marine Corps drill instructor, but gentle as a nurse, as well as a label, being label and management. Mothers requires an endless supply of energy a massive amount of patience and recognition of the fact that if the mother or the wife ever gets sick, God forbid, she must get well before the end of the school or work day. And more importantly, she must get well before food needs to be cooked. Because even if she's sick on her bed, amen, they'll be looking down at her. What's for breakfast? What's for dinner? What's for lunch? Amen. 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 Mothers can't be sick. Amen. Mothers can't be down. Amen. Amen. Because they want the mother. Amen. They need the mothers. Amen. They need the mothers. Amen. To do what nobody else can do in the house. Saints, Jesus was never too busy for his mother. 
In fact, even during the most important task of his life, which was the redemption of salvation of mankind, Jesus took the time out to make sure that his mother was cared for while he was dying on the cross. That's love, amen. That's love for a mother, amen. Therefore, take the time, saints, to honor your mother if they are alive. Or if they're not alive, take the time to honor their memories if they are deceased. Never forget your mother's love and never forget God's love. I want to close with a poem entitled, A Mother's Love by Helen Steiner Wright. And it reads like this. It says, a mother's love is something that no one can explain. It's made of deep devotion, sacrifice, and pain. It's endless and unselfish and enduring come what may. For nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It's patient and forgiven when all others are forsaken. And it never fails or falters even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far, before, it is far beyond defining. It defiles all explanation and it still remains a secret like the mystery of creation. A many splendid miracle man cannot understand. And another one is evidence of God's tender guiding hand. And I like to read two real life examples of this poem, even though there might be many more. The first example goes like this. It said around 6.30 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, James Lawson in California left home to apply for a job. About an hour later, his 36 year old wife, Patsy, left for her fifth grade teaching job, accompanied by her two small children, five year old Susan and two year old Gerald, to be dropped off at the babysitters. Unfortunately, they never got that far because eight and a half hours later, the James, found, um, James found his wife, Patsy, and daughter dead in the red car, upside down in a cold mountain stream. His two-year-old son was just buried alive in the 48 degree water. But in that death, the character of a mother was revealed in the most dramatic way. But when the father scrambled down the cliff, he found his wife locked in death, holding her little boy's head just above water in the submerged car. For eight and a half hour, you see Patsy had held her beloved father afloat and had finally died, her body almost frozen in death in the position of self-given love, holding her baby up to breathe. She died that another might live. That's the other essence of a mother's love. And the second example I want to read is, it says, years ago, a young mother was, wake, was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her tiny baby in her arms when she was overtaken by a blinding blizzard. She never reached her destination. And when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found by searchers beneath a mound of snow. But they discovered that before her death, this mother had taken off her outer clothing and wrapped it about her baby. And when they unwrapped the child, to their great surprise and joy, they found the baby alive and well. You see, the mother had mounted her body over, over the child and given her life for her child, proving again the depths of a mother's love. And years later, that child, David Lord George, grown to manhood, became prime minister of Great Britain and without doubt, one of England's greatest statesmen. You see, these are just two examples of the essence of a mother's love. And it also shows us the essence of Jesus' love for us. 
You see, Jesus also died so that we might live. I pray that if there is someone here who has never experienced the love of God through Christ, a love that's so close to the love of mothers, that this will be your time of decision. And I pray that you will recognize that there is one who has already gone through the valley of the shadow of death for your behalf and made it possible for you to live forever. Made it possible that you might have life and abundant life. Jesus again, he died, amen, on the third day. But on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. He rose again that we might have a future. He moves, he rose, he rose, showing his great love for us. But while we were yet in our sins, Jesus died for us. Amen. And so because Jesus died for us, amen, amen, laid down his life for us. We are to live for him. And because mothers sacrifice so much for us, we are to live our lives giving back just as they gave for us. So let us pray, saints. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all mothers and mother figures this day. Heavenly Father, we give you praise with grateful hearts for the moms, the ladies, the grandmas, the aunts, the neighbor lady, or the church mother who has had so much influence on our lives. And as we remember our years, whether many or short, we can identify countless women who have encouraged us, who have loved us, who have prayed for us, who have nurtured us, who have cried for us and cycled for us. Lord, we thank you for the heart, the tenderness rather, of all women who have played a part in our lives, Lord God, and even in the lives of children. They are quiet yet tenacious spirits the warm and their welcoming lives. You, oh God, have blessed us and impacted us through our mothers and mother figures. And we said thank you for everyone who played a part in our growth and even in our spiritual walk. And for those listening today who have lost their mom to death, for those who today who didn't have the best mom, for those here today who don't feel like they are, they are or were a good mom, for those who here today who feel pain because they never were a mom, for those moms here who have lost a child to death, oh Lord, we entrust these moms and their particular needs to you. Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to bless them, bless the fruit of their wounds, Lord God. And Lord God, we just pray for our children today, Lord God. Lord God, our children are going through so much pain, so much separation, Lord God, so much change, Lord God. But Lord God, we ask you to lift them up above the situations, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to keep them strong, Lord God. Keep them steadfast, unmovable, Lord God. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And for those, Lord God, who feel abandoned, Lord God, who feel Lord God, depressed and stressed, Lord God. Be comfort to them, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you are still there. Even when mother and father, a sister or brother, whoever, cannot get to them, cannot hold them in their arms, Lord God. You, Lord God, can wrap your loving arms around them, Lord God. Because, Lord God, distance is not a problem with you, Lord God. You are close to the brokenhearted, Lord God. You are close, Lord God, to the downtrodden. You are close to the hurting, Lord God. So we ask you to minister to our children right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord God. And Lord God, for those children, Lord God, who won't call their mother, Lord God, who are separated from their mother, Lord God, we're praying, Lord God, that you will touch them today, Lord God. Lord God, we pray that you arrest them today, Lord God. We're praying, Lord God, that you get their attention today, Lord God. Let them know that they don't have a one mother, Lord God. Lord God, and Lord God, they'll never know when their mother, Lord God, will be gone. So while they yet have mother, Lord God, the Lord God, they'll reach out, Lord God, and contact them, Lord God. Lord God, I heard this morning, Lord God, Lord God, Pastor Pilar's mother's, Lord God, what you was preaching, Lord God. Give, this is, she said, give your mother a card, Lord God. Give them more, Lord God, than just a dollar, Lord God. Give them, Lord God, some, some money, Lord God. Give them, Lord God, more than a Hershey bar, Lord God. Put some time, put some thought in the gifts, Lord God. Put some thoughts, Lord God, 
even they can't buy a gift. Put some thoughts, Lord God, into the words they say to mom today, Lord God. Lift up the mom's counselors, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, we just truly thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, Lord God, that you have held, Lord, given us, Lord God, to be moms, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for motherhood, Lord God. We thank you for womanhood, Lord God. Lord God, we take nothing from the men, Lord God, but this day we will thank you, Lord God, for motherhood and womanhood, Lord God. So we thank you, God. We praise your name, Lord God. And we ask you, Lord God, not only pray for mothers, Lord God, pray for all the sick, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for all, Lord God, the, Lord God, the downtrodden. We pray for all, Lord God, the people, Lord God, Lord God, whatever they need, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to minister to them today, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, Lord God, that you will just be mighty good to your people today, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you are still real, Lord God. You are still real, Lord God, in this pandemic, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are still rich, Lord God. Yeah, this land might be suffering a drought, Lord God, a famine, Lord God, but we know that there's no famine in heaven, Lord God, that you are still, Lord God, that able to supply our every need, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we continue to look unto you. We continue to trust you, Lord God, for everything, Lord God. And we just pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. So again, Happy Mother's Day to one and all. And may your day be filled with joy. May your day be filled with love. May your day be filled with Jesus' joy in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that someone needs to laugh today. Amen. The laughter have dried up in you. Amen. But God is saying laugh today. Amen. Laugh today. Break forth in Jesus' joy today. Amen. And so you will see that the dark clouds will just dissipate. Amen. You need to just learn how to laugh. Even laugh at yourself. Amen. Laugh at yourself. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I have to sit and laugh at myself sometime. Amen. Amen. So I just thank God for the ability to laugh today. Because he said joy is like medicine. So somebody needs to get some medicine of joy today. And that starts with laughter. Just start with laughter. Amen. Amen. Be glad. Be happy in Jesus. Happy. Happy in Jesus. Amen. So let's break out and sing. Amen. Amen. I'm not a singer. Amen. But I can break out and sing before the Lord. Amen. Because I, I, I've learned to make a joyful noise unto the rock of my salvation. I've learned to, amen, to just sing unto the Lord. Amen. Sing unto him. Amen. Because that's once again, God has been good to me. God has been good to me. I'm not walking around looking like I've been sucking on a lemon. Amen. Amen. People's like, what's going on? I thought you had Jesus. Amen. So if you got Jesus, amen, sometimes you just got to show it. Amen. Sometimes you just got to smile. Amen. Sometimes you just got to have some joy. God, I want you to be down all the time. Amen. God wants you to get up. Amen. Amen. Get up. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get up and get out. We'll see people less fortunate than all. Amen. And say, what do we have to complain about? Amen. 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 So again, I decree and declare, amen, amen, amen. Joy, joy, joy in your life on this Mother's Day. And this joy, not just for women, this joy for everybody, amen, everybody, amen, everybody, lottie daughter and everybody, amen, amen. Have joy today, have joy, have joy, Barbara, amen. Have joy, Virginia, have joy, 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 have joy, Don, amen. Everybody have joy, amen. Joy, joy, I just give you joy. You want some joy? You can have some of mine. Amen. I got enough joy I can share with you. Have some of my joy. Amen. Well, let me get off this line. Amen. Go hear my sister preach a word too. Amen. Because preachers need to be preached to also. So, Sandra, I, I heard that you were doing battle. So, I'm glad that you were doing battle. So, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So God bless you one and all. Amen. I love you much now. And reach out and touch somebody. Amen. Somebody that you haven't heard from uh, in a long time. Amen. Stop waiting for somebody to call you. Call them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you, if you if you break the ice, amen, you'll see it shatter all around. Amen. So break the ice today. Call somebody. Amen. Call. Amen. Call. Don't give them a heart attack now. Amen. But call them. Amen. So God bless you. I love you. I love you. And God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So good evening. I mean, goodbye. Goodbye. All right.